Today, we want to keep looking at triple integrals. So here is a solid. It's going to be bounded below by the circular paraboloid, z equals x squared plus y squared, and bounded above by the plane, z equals 9. What we want to do is write a triple integral, a double integral, and a single integral for the volume of this solid. So pause the video and take a few minutes to write these three integrals. Make sure that they all come out to the same value. So go ahead and pause and then write these integrals. Welcome back. <laughs> it always seems so ridiculous when you watch it being filmed live. So let's take a look at our the integral that we can write. Now, um, I've decided that I want to write this triple integral as a dz dy dx. Another way we could go is dz dx dy. Those are the two most reasonable triple integrals that we can do. Because the most complicated stuff is happening top to bottom. But we should be able to write any permutation of dz dy dx. Let's start with dz dy dx. The idea behind writing an integral is what's z between, what's y between, what's x between. So for z, what's the bottom, what's the top? For y, what's the left, what's the right? For x, what's the back, what's the front? So the bottom of this solid is the paraboloid, z equals x squared plus y squared. And the top is the flat cap at z equals 9. If we look at this from the side, if we look at the side view among all these points down on below, we want the bottom to be the paraboloid and the top to be z equals nine. So that is gonna be our, uh, that, those will be our limits on z. The bottom is the paraboloid and the top is the nine. The other easy one to get would be the x's, because the last integral, the dz dy dx, means the x's have to be constants. And for that, we can take a look at the top view. And the top view happens when x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. So my radius is 3. So that means up here, x equals negative 3, and down here, x equals 3. I wanted to turn it as little as possible, so I, I know the x-axis is pointing downward. So the, in the x-direction, we're going to integrate from negative 3 to 3. That leaves the y-direction. So if we pick a typical x-value, we have to look at the left and the right of the y. So if we pick a typical x-value, We're looking between two halves, uh, the two semicircles. So here, y is plus or minus the square root. So it will have a minus square root of 9 minus x squared and a plus square root of 9 minus x squared. Sometimes I wonder if I will ever leave enough space on the second integral to write the functions for y. Maybe someday I will, but it's not today. Any questions? This is why we like triple integrals. All we have to do is left to right, back to front, bottom to top. What's z between? What's y between? What's x between? There's a triple integral that will give us the volume of W. Notice that when we integrate over W, 1 dV, that will give us the volume of W. 
But what we're using here is that the integral over W of one dV is the volume of W. Let's run the first integral in our triple integral. So our first integral is to integrate dz. We still have x going from negative three to three. We still have y going from negative square root nine minus x squared to positive square root nine minus x squared. But then when we integrate dz, integral of one is going to be z evaluated from nine, or sorry, from x squared plus y squared up to nine. This is still in uh, integral dy dx. Antiderivative of one with respect to z is just going to be z, but then we're going to plug in uh, x uh, nine and x squared plus y squared. So we're going to plug in nine and we're going to plug in x squared minus y squared and we're going to subtract those. So the new next function we have to integrate is nine minus x squared plus y squared. This is just what we would naturally integrate our way into. Let's think about what this stuff means in the context of a double integral. In the first problem, in the, the triple integral, we integrate one dv, and that'll give us the volume of the solid w. If we wanted to calculate this volume as a double integral, we would integrate over a region, the height dA. So in the second integral, we're looking at the integral over R of some height function dA. And this is going to give us the volume under the height and above the region R. That's going to give us the volume under the height and above the region R. So if we look at this as the region R from the top view, the height that we're, we have is nine minus the X squared plus Y squared. And we do that for every point in the region. So we're taking this height multiplied by the DX DY, which is the DA. So we have height, we're integrating height over area. In the, in the triple integral, we're just integrating one times the volume. In the second integral, we move one dimension over to the integration slot. 
and we're integrating the height over the area. Let's take this one stage further and see what it gets us. I'm going to rewrite this function as nine minus x squared minus y squared. So the next integral If we just continue the process, just continue integrating, let's say from negative three to three, we got to integrate nine minus x squared minus y squared dy. So that's going to be a nine y minus x squared y minus a third y cubed evaluated from negative square roots to positive square roots. This is still in the integral dx. Well, now we've got ourselves a bit of a mess because we've got to plug in these two square roots into this function where the y is and then subtract. So this looks like a job for algebra. I actually want to pull this out of the integral. So we're going to have nine plus square root minus x squared times positive square root minus a third times the positive square root cubed. So we're going to have nine. Times the positive square root of nine minus x squared minus x squared times the positive square root minus a third of the square root cube. Now I'm going to go through and plug in the negative square root. So that was 9y minus x squared y minus a third y cubed. We plug in the square root of 9 minus x squared and the negative square root of 9 minus x squared. For convenience, I put the negative out in front of the 9, and the negative will change the sign of the x squared to a plus. Plug this stuff in. Now we've got to simplify this. So I've got nine square roots of 
minus an x squared times the square root minus a third of the square root cubed. And then we've got to distribute the negative. So we're going to have plus nine times the square root minus x squared times the square root. Minus and minus is plus a third of the square root cubed. Oops. The minus cubed will make this plus, so minus. So the minus gets cubed, and that changed the sign here to a plus, so minus and minus is a minus plus is minus. The square roots are all of nine minus x squared. Want to sort all that out. So if we clean all this up, we'll get uh, looks like 18 square roots. minus two X squared minus two thirds of the square root Q. This is the function that we're going to integrate from negative three to three. This is all just inside that radical or inside the square root. So this is all side work. Questions? How's my algebra? I need you to watch my algebra because I'm not very good at algebra. And I need worse at arithmetic. Now, presumably, we would have to integrate this again. And integrating this looks like the job for trigonometric substitution, which sounds like and I don't see a substitution that's not trigonometric substitution. But the advantage that we have is that this is a single integral. And we have the aforementioned graphing calculators, which is really good at calculating single integrals.
So we can either calculate this using a trigger method substitution, which seems like it would be kind of awful, but not too bad. Sine case, x is equal to three sine of theta. I gotta stop myself now before I start wanting to integrate this, see what it ends up with. And we can just have our calculator run this calculation. I didn't practice this one beforehand in my notes. It's like, oh, just do this one on calculator. Actually, I didn't, don't have any notes. So, fingers crossed. Pretty fast considering. So on our first pass, it looks like we get 127.23. It looks like it's going to be 40.55. So I divided that by pi to see if it was just a fraction multiple of pi. And it looks like it would be just 40.5 times pi. So 40, 40 and one half. So 81. Abs pi. So, unlike the problem we had yesterday, when we're calculating the volume of a sphere, which we have a formula for, we're calculating the volume of a circular paraboloid. And we don't have a formula for that. So the what we could do to check our answer is to calculate this volume by setting up another single integral. So if we look at this, what we could do is take a look at this solid and imagine another way to calculate this volume. Let's find, uh, uh, well, actually, y'all are going to have to find another integral so we can come at this volume from another direction and see if it works out the same. If we calculate the volume with another single integral, either by slicing with uh, disks or cylindrical shells, for example, and we come up with the same 40 and a half pi, we can be fairly confident that our triple integration calculation was correct. So your job now Now we want to check our work by writing an integral for the volume using some kind of solid of revolution, either shells or disks. So 2 pi r times the height times the delta x or pi r squared times the height. If we can come up with the same 127.23, we can be fairly confident that our calculation worked out. Then the next check thing would be to see if uh, what that has to do with the integral that we the single integral that we saw here, because this one is less obvious as far as finding um, 
thinking about integrating the area over some height. But that would be the next step. What area is this over the height dx? All right, that's going to do it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day. And thanks for playing. <laughs>